Hello and welcome to the Maya Tool Belt. This is Michael. In this video, we're going to talk about circularize. You can find this command under the Edit Mesh menu. You can see here that it's this green highlighted command under the Components uh, subheading, Circularize. And it has options as well. You can see them here. Now what does Circularize do? Let me just close this for now. Circularize is actually pretty interesting, and it's new obviously to 2018. As you can see, it's highlighted green like this, which indicates a new command for 2018 as of uh, this recording anyway. It's new. If you watch this three years from now, who knows? But Circularize is pretty neat. And to demonstrate this, I think I'm just going to create a cube and just scale it up. I'm going to go over here to the inputs and increase the subdivisions width, height, and depth all at the same time just to get a nice dense mesh of faces. And I'll hide the grid for now. So, circularize. What does that do? I'm just going to, just as a demonstration here, I'm just going to kind of uh, grab some faces like this. And I'm going to grab them along the edge here because I think it's more interesting if I choose these faces here. But you can choose any arrangement of uh, adjacent faces. So I have this grouping of faces like this. So I'm going to go to Edit Mesh circularize. Now in the options in the settings I'm just going to say edit and reset settings. So here's my default settings and hit circularize. And you see right away all those faces I had selected have been arranged in a circular shape. Just by the click of a button. So we have several settings here. This uh, option box appears that we can adjust our circularize results and these are most of these settings if not all of them are within the edit mesh circularize options if we were to compare them yeah, it looks like it's pretty much the same settings here so we can always change those settings after the fact so I tend to leave the settings at their defaults and then do all my adjustments here so first we have the normal offset and the normal is referring to the surface direction so if I hold down the control key, left click and drag here, you can see what happens as we adjust the normal offset value from positive to negative values. We're offsetting these faces along the normal. And right now it's using this diagonal direction due to the surface normal average between the one the surface the faces that were on top of the cube and on the side of the cube, the average of those normals is now going diagonal. That's why we're oriented in this way. We have radial offset. So again, hold down control, left click and drag. You can see we can grow and shrink our circular selection. Then we have normal orientation. If I left click on this, we have a couple options. We have automatic, face average, which is what we're doing right now, and edge loop. Now face average, like I said, is averaging the normals of the faces we had selected and choosing the average, which is this diagonal direction right now. If I chose edge loop, and the reason why it's sunk down here is again because of our offset values. If I take these back to zero, we should get it something close to where it would it would be. So here we have using the edge loop as its basis. If we go back to automatic, it will kind of automatically choose what Maya believes is the best choice. So automatic tends to be the best choice from what I've seen when playing with this tool. The automatic function. You may find yourself wanting to look at the other option that's not chosen from the automatic setting just to see what it gives you. Like this will give me this and you can decide for your on your own if you feel like that's a better option or not. But I think most of the time, every time I've used this, the automatic setting will usually give me the most optimal use of the, of the uh, circularized function. Then we have twist. So twist, you can see the interior faces of my selection pretty much stay where they are. It's the exterior, the boundary of that circularize that, of the affected faces that is twisting around the normal, that surface normal, of the circular selection. Then we have rel relax interior. And right now it's set to 1. If I, again, left click and drag on this, it goes from 0 to 1. If I type in a 2 here, it doesn't change anything, so 0 to 1 is the min and maximum. So 0, you can see with relax interior set to 0, we have a, a bit of a harder or a bit more of a uh, straight grid here. 
relaxing the interior you see those outer the outer edge loop of the interfaces are kind of curving out toward the circularized border edge it's kind of giving us this rounding of the faces within here sometimes you may not want that and this this will retain with that relaxed interior set to zero you can see how it retains that grid spacing that the original cube faces have but relax interior is that function there next we have alignment right now it's set to automatic but the other options are surface with per vertex in parentheses and then surface with average in parentheses so the per vertex surface or the average surface for the alignment let's see what happens with surface per vertex and you can see what happens there the faces are still circular but it's aligned with the faces as they were if I go back to surface average you can see there it gives us another result and then go back to automatic and it gives us back to this next we have even, evenly distribute on or off if I click it you can see what happens with it off and then with it on now the, I guess the main area where it's most obvious if you look at this this edge loop right these edges here if it evenly distribute is off this point is coming to this point here on the rounded edge click it on you can see it actually moves to this point and you see these points are kind of moving over here so it's it's adjusting or just it's affecting how the distribution of edges is distributed and whether it's evenly distributed or not but evenly distributed I feel like I mean it just depends on your selection in this in this particular case I feel like evenly distributed evenly distributed being off is giving me a cleaner look to this selection as opposed to it being on we get kind of a twisting happening add divisions right now we have that set to zero let me go ahead and set this up to one and it's kind of subtle what's happening but as I increase this up quite a bit you can see that our circle is much much more round and you see my edges as I let me zoom in here there you go see this is the edge here this red line as I mouse over these edges they highlight red and now you see we have lots of edges along the outer ring of this circle so this has divided the circles outer border in this case 14 times and we have a really nice round shape it's not doesn't have any of that um, faceting if you go back to divisions of zero this is the original you see we have these long straight edges adding the divisions can smooth that out like that and then last with adding divisions with add division set to zero you'll notice that supporting edges is grayed out if we add even one division supporting edges becomes available and then we have a pull down menu for this we have a couple options here we have it set to off which it currently is exterior interior or both with exterior you'll notice we have all the supporting edges of the exterior of our selection all connecting to their respective division along the outer ring let me decrease that division down you'll notice what happens let's see let's get back to this there we go so with the division set to one with it zero supporting edges go away it's grayed out to one and then increase that you can see all these divisions being added in that's with the exterior let's do the interior you can see all these edges being added in around the outer ring to support all the edge all the divisions that are being added so set to zero it grays out goes away to one we get this then two three four so on okay and then of course there's both which does both now adding these divisions and having the supporting edges for them is definitely something that you probably want to do to avoid having an ingon or a face that has way too many edges than what you're trying to go for then there's off which takes it all off so now I have these faces selected if I were to extrude these edit mesh extrude then we can pull it out you see all those divisions that have been that have been added much more easily you can see them on the sides of our extruded surface so it's actually a pretty cool tool 
if you need that kind of circular shape, instead of having to try to create that yourself, like trying to uh, adjust all these points by hand to, to get them in that circular shape, you can just select these faces, edit mesh, circularize, and you see there, there it goes. Just kind of arranges it in this nice perfect circle. Now let's go back to the, uh, let me undo that and go back to the settings, edit mesh, circularize, options. And you see here we have the same settings, normal offset, radial offset, twist, relaxed interior, the alignment with surface per vertex surface average, but then we have smoothing angle, that's a new one, evenly distribute on or off and add divisions. And if we increase add divisions, you'll notice supporting edges that becomes available. So the only thing that's different here is, is the smoothing angle option. And the reason why you don't see it here actually by default, if you click on this little dashed line icon in the upper right corner of this little option box, you'll notice all these check boxes here and the one that's not checked is smoothing angle. So if I check smoothing angle, it becomes added to the list. So it's not as if it's not available here. They just, for whatever reason, the people who made this tool that dropped it off of the option box by default. But you can turn it back on by clicking this little uh, dashed line button in the upper right corner and checking it. And you can also, of course, uncheck or check any of these to adjust how this list is populated. So with smoothing angle on, if I were to take this down to zero or up to to 180, it's not going to make a big difference. That's because just the arrangement of this is not really uh, very noticeable. What smoothing angle is, in case you're not sure, is essentially the hardening or softening of edges. I'm not sure if I, if I were to extrude this, if it would make um, a difference. But what's, what smoothing angle essentially is, is touching on, if I were to grab this sphere here, and I'll just move a little bit closer. If I went to mesh display and say harden the edge, you'll notice all the faceting that becomes visible. If I were to select it and look at the poly soft edge command here, we have an angle. And if I increase this, this is the smoothing angle of the sphere. And by the, I change it to 30 degrees, for example, we have a nice soft uh, looking surface like we normally would. So this having the uh, circularized function having this smoothing angle is the same essential idea. You can adjust that softening or hardening of the edges through this command here, smoothing angle, setting it to 30, which is the default value, or you can go to zero, which would make it all hard edges. You can see all that faceting, or go all the way up to 180, which is the highest it can go, and that's the smoothest uh, surface result you can get. But yeah, circularize it. I think it's pretty fun, a pretty cool tool. You have all these different settings here. You can adjust them. Um, I feel like, especially for, if you were wanting to do, you know, something like this, where you wanted to have this, uh, circular shape coming off of another non-circular shape like this cube, it's very handy for giving you that functionality without having to, you know, what I would normally consider the workflow for this kind of thing would be to create this piece separately and then trying to merge it in with the old, the other piece, the cube here, and connecting them in and deleting faces and merging vertices and all this kind of stuff. This kind of goes around all that and gives you this kind of option. But yeah, circularize. It's kind of neat. It's a cool tool. I like it. I need to uh, remember that next time I need to have something like this. Because it's, it's very handy. I can see it being very handy. I just, I just need to... It's one of these uh, situations where you don't know a tool is useful until you have a use for the tool, right? So you just have to kind of keep your eye out during your projects. Like, oh yeah, they are circularized. this circularized tool would be handy right now. You just have to know about it and, you, and use it whenever it comes up. Anyway, if you've been following along with my channel in real time, you know, when, as you watch this particular video, this is, this is my first video in like two months, and uh, I apologize for that. But the main reason being just with school and work and family and so on and the holidays and just everything, I just have not found the time. Um, but I'm hoping to rectify that starting with this video here going over circularize. 
But in any case, if you have any questions or if I missed anything, please let me know in the comments. I do appreciate all of your support, and thanks again for watching. I'll talk to you later.